Hello YouTube, my name is Travis and this is Bacon and Backpacking. Today we're going to be answering a very important question. Do you need a knife while backpacking? Stay tuned. So I want to go over a couple of different things. Um, you know, with backpacking in general and with the gear choices that you make, whether it's clothing, sleep system, pretty much any item that you bring with you, um, you want to make sure that it's light, it's not bulky, and preferably that it's multi-use. Um, I would say that this fits the bill. Uh, you know, a knife generally weighs less than six ounces, and I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of things that you can do with this piece of gear. So first of all, uh, let's answer the obvious. You know, a whole bunch of people, um, especially the ultralight backpackers, they say, I don't need a knife, you know, I just take a razor blade. And if all you're gonna do is open up freeze-dried uh, freeze meals with it, then sure, take a razor blade. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Or you could take no knife at all. But uh, I wanna give you guys some ideas of what you can do with your blade. So in my opinion, uh, one of the places where having a knife like this is gonna shine is with your fire processing. You can use a knife to delimb. Another thing uh, that you guys see me do all the time, you know, if it's wet conditions outside and you're having a hard time getting wood to burn because everything's wet, one thing you can do is take a big chunk of wood like this, split it in half and get to that drier wood in the center so it burns more easily. Just like that. You guys take a look at this. This is fat wood. So I use that knife to baton down that wood now what you can do is if you have this sharp 90 degree spine right here, you can actually use this to start processing material, okay? So what you'll do is you'll use the back end of that knife right there, you can see here, start getting some of those shavings off of there, make some sawdust. And this makes an amazing tender source. Now you can also use the blade for this as well too. Get some curls in there for some bigger material. See? Then you can have some super fine here to take a spark and get everything started. And you can have your curls. This is a fantastic fire starter. All right, we now have fire. What if you lose a tent stake? What if a tent stake breaks? Uh, what if you don't pack it and you leave it at home? Well, as long as you have access to a piece of wood, you can take a knife and you can start sharpening. And this took literally less than two minutes. Um, I didn't even try to make it nice, put a little point on it, cut out a little notch right here for, you know, your, your cordage or your guy line or whatever, and then boom, you got a stake. So at the end of the day, you know, for the, I believe four ounces that this knife weighs, there's a ton of different uses for it, okay? Um, there's some other things as well too. Uh, you could pry things open with the spine if you needed to. I mean, I wouldn't do that unless it was something that was absolutely necessary. Um, it can be a part of a medical kit. If you need to cut some tape or some gauze, or God forbid there's an injury that's bad enough that you have to you know, cut off some clothing or something like that. Um, so those are some other things that it could be used for as well too. And let's talk about the obvious. I'm not gonna get too far into this because this is an opinion thing 
these things devolve into political conversations somehow, and I have no interest in that. This can be used for defense. Okay, is it the preferred method of defense against an animal or another person? No. Is it better than not being able to defend yourself with a weapon at all? Yes. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and try to hunt grizzly bears with this thing, but I'm just telling you, multi-use item. I mean, how many different things have we covered so far in this video that you can use this piece of equipment for? Now, again, I'm not telling you guys that you have to have one. If you don't want to take one with you, don't. But I think for the weight, um, you know, it's very valuable in anybody's kit. So that's just my opinion on the matter. A couple of things to look for in a knife. Um, I'm very partial to Mora knives. They're super cheap for the quality. Um, I'm looking for something with probably a four to five inch blade. Okay, I want a full tang, meaning that the handle or the tang passes all the way through um, the handle of the knife. You know, if you have like a little rat t uh, tail tang or, you know, something that stops up here or something like that, you can't do all of this hard use type stuff. You're not gonna be batoning wood with it and things like that, and you're definitely not gonna wanna use it for defense um, should the need arise, okay? So I want at least that four to five inch blade. I want it to be carbon steel with a 90 degree spine on it. Basically meaning this is ground sharp, okay? This will almost cut you. Um, in fact, it may cut you, all right? Um, that is for getting those, you know, shavings and that sawdust and stuff like that. I do like a Scandinavian grind just because I think it's very easy to sharpen. Um, that's just personal preference, and I think it's a good, like, multi-use grind. And then handle-wise, just something that's, you know, something that's comfortable. Um, the reason why you want that 90 degree spine is, like I said, to not only process, you know, that wood, but also to strike a ferrocerium rod, like you saw. Um, Bic lighters are usually what I use to start my fires, because it doesn't get much easier than an open flame that goes, and Bics work <laughs> pretty much, you know, the first time every single time. But it's possible that you dropped it, or you lost it, or you forgot it, or something like that. So it is nice to have that ferrocerium rod, because that ferro rod in this knife cannot fail. The lighter could fail. Do you need both of those things? No. Is it nice to have? Yes. Do I have fun playing with them while I'm out here and doing some bushcrafty stuff? Yeah. So that's kind of my opinion, guys. Um, again, leave your comments down below. You know, let me know what you think. Do you carry a knife? If you do, what type of knife do you take? And, and most importantly, why? Like, why did you make the choice that you made? Okay, so I would love to hear from a lot of you guys on this. So please do me a favor. If you guys are liking the video so far, uh, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Like I said, leave some comments down below and, uh, you know, interact with me, ask me some questions, uh, give me some feedback. And then most importantly, guys, uh, please subscribe and then share the videos. Um, you know, this YouTube thing is going better than I thought it would in the beginning here. And I'm having a lot of fun doing this. So uh, I want to bring you guys along for the ride. So like I said, give a dude a like, give a dude a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.